Hello, welcome to the course PH6B13E Computational Physics. Contents of today's lecture is taken from Numerical Methods for Scientists and Engineers by K. Shankar Rao. We will continue to discuss topics from Module 2 Numerical Methods in Physics. In the previous class, we discussed about how to solve ordinary differential equations using Euler's method. And as we know, Euler's method is, is not a very accurate method because there you find the slope only at a single point and you can improve upon it by calculating slopes at multiple points and this type of method is known as Runge-Kutta method. Runge-Kutta uh, refers to a family of one-step methods for numerical solution of differential equations. Runge-Kutta methods are known by their order. Incidentally, Euler's method is a first order Runge-Kutta method. Similarly, we have second order RK method, fourth order method, etc. Typically, as the order increases, the accuracy of the method also increases. So, second order RK method or RK2 method is more accurate compared to Euler's method and RK4 method is more accurate compared to RK2. And RK4 is the, is the most popular method for solving the differential equation, but it's, it's a more involved technique compared to RK2. So in today's class, we are going to discuss only about second order Runge-Kutta method, which is also known as Hune's method. Now, if you recollect the Euler's method uh, in the previous class, so we have a, an ordinary differential equation, uh, dy by dx, which is a function of x and y. And when you solve it, you get y as a function of x, y of x. So here, what we did was the x, uh, the range of values of x, we divided into a number of finite subintervals. And in each sub-interval, we calculated the slope at the starting point and using that slope value, we calculated the value of y for the next x value. So this is a step-by-step -step method. So you repeat this procedure in each of the sub-intervals and that's how you approximate the solution curve using a series of straight lines. So the general equation is the new value of y, which is yi plus 1 equal to old value yi plus slope into step size. So slope at a given point you call it as m and step size is h, so yi plus 1 equal to yi plus m into h. Now, as I said, in Euler's method, we consider slope only at a single point and that's why if you look at the solution obtained using Euler's method, this is considerably deviated from the exact solution. Okay. Now, you can improve upon this by taking slopes at multiple points and then take the average of all those slope values. Okay. So that's what we are going to do in Runge-Kutta method and here the order of Runge-Kutta method refers to the number of slopes which you are using for calculation. That's why in Euler's method you consider slope at a single point, hence this is known as first order Runge-Kutta method. In RK2 you will consider slopes at two points, similarly in RK4 you will consider slopes at four points. So the more the number of slopes you calculate, better will be your result. Okay, so coming specifically to uh, the RK2 method, so if you take the first subinterval in this particular figure, so you have x0, y0, x1, y1. So let's give them some general coordinates. The first one you call it as the previous value x i y i and the second point is xi plus 1, yi plus 1. So basically you have to calculate slopes at each of these points. So the value of the slope at the previous point you call it as m1, m1 equal to f of xi, yi. Similarly slope at the forthcoming point 
m2 is f of xi plus 1 comma yi plus 1. And average of these two is given by m equal to m1 plus m2 by 2 which is f of xi comma yi plus f of xi plus 1 comma yi plus 1 divided by 2. Then using Euler's formula, you can you can approximate the you can predict the next y value as y i plus one equal to y i plus m into h, where m is now the the average slope value. So substitute for m, you get y i plus one equal to y i plus f of x i comma y i plus f of x i plus one comma y i plus one divided by two into h. But there is one problem here. Now, if you want to apply this formula, you need to calculate f of x i plus 1 comma y i plus 1. But this value is unknown. Remember, in this kind of a problem, you are given only the initial point x i y i. Right? You do not know what is x i plus 1 and y i plus 1. So, unless you calculate x i plus 1 and y i plus 1, you cannot determine the slope at this point. Now, how do you calculate y i plus 1? So for that, you can use the Euler's method, which you learned in the previous class. Since the x values are equispaced with a step size of h, you can straight away write x i plus 1 equal to x i plus h. And y i plus 1, you can use the Euler's method. So this is going to be y i plus h into f of x i comma y i. So substitute for x i plus 1 and y i plus 1 in the equation. So you get y i plus 1 equal to y i plus f of x i y i plus f of x i plus h comma y i plus h into f of x i y i divided by 2 into h. The equation looks pretty bulky. Let's simplify it. So call the first term h into f of x i comma y i as k1. Similarly, the second term h into f of x i plus h comma y i plus h into f of x i comma y i as k2. Now, in this second equation, this particular term is k1. So, when you substitute for that, you get k2 equal to h of f of x i plus h comma y i plus k1. So once you find k1 and k2 substitute in this equation, so you get the new value of y, y i plus 1 equal to the old value of y, y i plus k1 plus k2 divided by 2. Now if you look at this entire, entire scheme, uh, phenomenologically what happens is so in this particular equation k1, what you are doing is you are predicting the, the y value. You are predicting the y value at the next point using the Euler's method. So this is the first prediction. K1 is the first prediction. On the other hand, in this equation, second equation, what you do using the predicted value of y, you calculate the slope, then you find the average slope using that average slope value you are improving your prediction you are correcting your previous prediction because the previous prediction was done using the Euler's method it is not very accurate so you are improving upon it so k2 term is the, the improvement term or the correction term and k1 term is the, the prediction term. so that's that's what physically these equations mean let's do a, a quick problem Solve dy by dx equal to 2y by x with an initial condition y of 1 equal to 2. You are asked to find out the value of y at x equal to 1.5 with a step size of 0 0.25. The x values are 1, 1.25, 1.5. The first set of value x0, y0 is given. So basically you need to find out y of 1.25 and y of 1.5. This is a step by step procedure. Okay. So the slope f of x y is given as 2 y by x, x naught is 1, y naught is 2, h equal to 0 0.25. So first step find y of 1.25. You know the equations k1 equal to h into f of x i y i. 
So substitute for all the parameters, h is 0 0.25 and you have f of x i y i. This is 2 into y, y is y naught, which is 2. So 2 into 2 divided by x naught, which is 1. So when you do this, you get k1 equal to 1. k2 equal to h into f of x i plus h comma y i plus k1. So this is 0 0.25 into f of x i plus h is 1 plus 0 0.25. y i plus k1 is 2 plus 1. So this is 0 0.25 into 2 into 3 divided by 1.25 which is 1.2. So once you find k1, k2, finally substitute in the uh, in the equation y i plus 1 equal to y i plus k1 plus k2 by 2. So y i plus 1 is y of 1.25. This is equal to y of 1 which is 2 plus 1 plus 1.2 divided by 2, you get 3.1. So, y of 1.25 is 3.1. Now, you go to the, the next step, do the same procedure in the next sub-intervals. So, when you do that, you get y of 1.5 is 4.4435. So, step by step, in each sub-interval, you calculate two slopes, find their average, Using that average slope value to find the y value in the, in the next point. Okay. Now let's see how to implement this in the Python programming platform. The program looks very similar to the program for OLS method. There is only a slight difference. So first you define the function. So def f of, f, f of x comma y, z equal to 2 into y by x, then return z. Then you input the initial and final initial values of x and y using the split function. Similarly, you input the final value of x and increment. Then you print x value, y value separated by a tabular space. Then to perform the iteration, you invoke the while loop while x less than or equal to xf. Then you can print the first value x naught, y naught straight away. So print x backslash t y. So x and y values printed will be printed with a, a tab space between them. Now you write the actual equation k1 equal to h into f of x y, k2 equal to h into f of x plus h comma y plus k1. Then your new y value y equal to old y value y plus k1 plus k2 divided by 2. So your y value is incremented. Now you increment your x value as x equal to x plus h. So this is a, a simple program. Uh, you can try it out yourself using uh, the PyDroid app which you have installed in your mobile phones. Or if you have a, a laptop or a desktop, you can uh, download Python and uh, do it in there. So, so there is a homework for you. So choose the function which you which you have learned how to solve using OLS method in the previous class, dy by dx equal to 3x square plus 1 and y of 1 equal to 2. That's the initial value. You need to solve it for x equal to 2 with a step size of 0 0.25. So we had done this problem in the previous class using OLS method. The same problem you do using Range Kutta method second order and you compare the result. Because you already know the exact solution, right? For the exact solution, you simply integrate it with respect to x. So this is going to be x cubed plus x. Okay, when you apply the limits, you get the exact value of the solution. And you compare which result is closer to the exact solution. And you will find that the result you obtained using uh, RK2 method is much closer to the original value compared to OLS method. So that's why we said our K2 method is an improvement over the, the first order oil method. There is an additional homework for you. Write the program for the above problem in PyDroid app. And uh, in programming, you have the luxury of playing with the step size. You can choose uh, any step size of your choice. So remember the thumb rule. When you reduce the step size, the accuracy is going to increase. So you can check 
for what step size you get the best accuracy. So one thing you have to remember, uh, every system, every system you use or every processor uh, you use, it has a certain computational capability. So when you decrease the step size, the number of iterations is going to increase. So you cannot keep an infinitesimal step size because that involves a large number of iteration. Probably your processor is not going to afford that. So after a certain step size, the, you will get an error message like the program is not able to handle the number of computations. Okay. So you can see up to what step size you can go and you will find that with when you decrease the step size, you are reaching closer and closer to the exact values. So just check how close you can reach the, the exact solution. So these are the two assignments. That's for today. Thank you.